Hello and welcome to the third video in this series looking at the NVD3 graphing library. So in this video we're starting off exactly where we uh, stopped from the last video except for a couple of changes I've made in preparation. I've put data.js, uh, I've put all the data back in because we removed some just to make fewer bars in the last video. Functions.js, I've put show values back to true and I've removed uh, what was being logged in the console. Uh, here just to clean everything a little bit here. So what I'd like to do in this video, so I'll go to the site actually and um, show you what that looks like. If I click load chart it gives me this uh, chart here with all the bars like so. Everything else should be the same. So what I'd like to do in this video is actually I'd like to colour these bars. I'd like to make the bars below zero red and the bars above zero green. And to do that means changing some of the properties of the charts. And before uh, I did this you'll notice in our live demo there's nothing in the code, or in sorry, in the live code on the nvd.3.org uh, site to show anything about changing the color of the bars. And this is one of the difficulties of getting started with NVD3. There's not a lot of documentation. Um, one of the really useful things you can do, however, is download the zip or the tar from above, extract that, and start to have a look at what sides in there, what's inside there. I've done that. That's here in this Novus NVD3 folder here. Um, I've already got it prepared to save a little bit of time. This is actually a site, if you ran a web, uh, web server inside here, you'd have an index.html where inside it's running, allows you to see all of the examples, here they all are, with the HTML files of all the charts that are available, with some small styling on there as well, some images. But the main thing is inside here you can have a look at exactly how the charts in those examples are put together. And they're actually a little bit more thorough with more options than those on the live site. So they're worth taking a look at and they're usually a good starting point to find out how something was done. But let's go a little bit further. If we look at our draw chart function, here we can see that we've got an NV, uh, we're calling the add graph function of an NV object. And then we're asking to add, to create a discrete bar chart from md.models.discrete um, bar chart. And then here we're setting some properties on the chart. And the question is, where is all of this? And this is kind of the, the gateway to understanding how NVD3 works. Well, it's inside source. If you go inside source, you'll see that um, you've got a CSS folder, which we'll be looking at in later videos, because we'll need that, models, and then some general JavaScript files here. If I go into core.js, you'll see that's where actually the NV uh, object is set up. And it's got really good comments to tell you what all of the different properties are. Uh, scrolling down there, there's logging, for example, here. And I think right at the bottom, there's our add graph function here, which is explained what's going on here, which is the function we actually called here on the NV object. The discrete bar chart will actually find inside models. So I go in models and it's actually discrete bar chart.js. And here we can see that we've got the public variables. So these are the things we can set and change on our chart. So we've got the axis, uh, the margins, showing the legend, staggering labels, all the things we've already seen are all inside here. Orientations here, uh, tooltip as well, which has its own dedicated JavaScript file as well. We'll get to that in many later videos. And then down the bottom here we can see those being exposed and we can see the getters and setters for all of these variables as well. So the first place you should go after the examples for your particular chart is then into the relevant JavaScript file and have a look what properties you've actually got available to change. And the interesting thing as well is we're also inheriting options from discrete bar. So that means the options available in the discrete bar or the properties are also available in our discrete bar chart. And one of them, for example, you'll often use is this force Y, which isn't in the specified specifically in the discrete bar um, chart, but is in discrete bar which you can use to force the scale on the Y axis where it starts and when it ends, for example. So often you're required to do a little bit of digging around inside here and you'll find out um, the various properties you need to set. We're interested in setting the color, which is this one here. And at the moment it's set to NV utils and get color. So we can have a very quick look in utils and somewhere in here there's the get color and here's the get color. And what's happening is, is if we, it, it says it takes an array or a function scale 
or nothing. If it takes nothing, what it ends up doing is actually setting a default color, which is from the D3 um, framework already using a scale. Uh, you can read about all what this is. It says it chooses a color scale of 20 colors from D3 here. You can go and have a look yourself at these links and understand what that's doing. But essentially, the colors that come in our bar chart here have come from there because we've not specified anything. So the first thing I'd like to do then is set that color. So I'm just going to close these off now because you can play around with those. And to do that, we're going to use the dot color. Now we know that the function can either take nothing or take an array. Um, so we're going to give this an array. And in this case, I'm just going to give this an array of one color. That's D5000. And this will be enough actually to make all of our, that should be a red color, all of our bars red. So if I just go refresh the site, empty, empty cache and hard reload and click load chart, now you'll see that all of my bars have actually changed to red. Very nice. I'm just going to go into the data and set the value of B to uh, 10 so that it's not near, near zero. And there's another one which was really near zero. It's the E here. Let's set this to um, 20 so that we're not all near the axis line. I'm just going to go and refresh my page and make sure those bars are OK. Just refresh and load. OK, now we can see the bars a bit more clearly. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to make anything above the line green and, green and below the line red. And to do this, what I need to do is I actually need to create an, or instead of just giving one color here, which will be the default color for all bars, I'm going to give an, create an array now with the colors set for each bar. Now, of course, it's not going to be very efficient to hand code them in here, particularly when you start ending up using re reusable functions for your graphs. So I'm going to make a new function. I'm going to just call this get uh, color array and set this equal to, and I've got to remember how to use my keyboard at some point, is equal to function. And we'll take in our data that we want to actually take in to do this. And first thing I'm going to do is make my array a new list. And now what I want to do is I'm going to loop through every one of the items inside my data that's come in. So I'll just make a, a for loop. So I'll say var i is equal to zero. And I am still getting used to this uh, keyboard, which unfortunately has completely different uh, layout to my old keyboard because it's German and not English. And I can't find half of the keys, but never mind. So I plus plus. And now I'll say that the current color that we actually want to have then, um, I'm just going to loop everything here. It should be fairly clear what I'm doing. Uh, I'll say this is going to be the hash. Where are you? There we are. So this is our standard uh, red color then. And what we're going to say, we'll say that if then that the value that's come from our data, so if our data object um, i and then the value is greater than or equal to zero, then we'll, oh my goodness, zero. Then we'll set the color to a green color. In this case, the green color can be, let's see, hash, and we'll have uh, 1B5E20, I'd noted. So 1B5E20, uh, and that should be uh, a nice and green, hopefully. The last thing we want to do then is take our call array and then we want to push onto that array our color and then we'll move on in the loop to the next color. And what this function should do then is should give us an array with the correct color specified for each of the colors for our bar. So I'll return the call array and what I'll do just before actually I return the call array is I'll just uh, do a console.log uh, and I'll log in this case our col array so we can actually see what our colors look like. The last thing I need to do then is instead of submitting uh, for my color the color like I did before, um, just the array with a single entry, I'm now going to call my get uh, col array like this. And inside here, I'm going to send in my chart data, I think it was called, in there. And then the other thing as well is we have to remember that I've, my chart data is a list and I actually want to send these values into the function. So, and this can trip you up a little bit, but I actually want, because it's a list, I want the first element in my chart data. And then what I actually want is I want to use the key and I think it was values. Yes, values. Like so. And that should send my data in correctly. So just save uh, data.js as well. Go back to the site, do a refresh. 
And now if I click load chart, you can see that we get the bars green and red as needed. And on the right hand side in the in the um, console here, you can see that here's my array of the various color values needed. So sorry about the bit of uh, confusion with my keyboard when I was typing the code. I can't get used to the new layout of it. Um, but hopefully that's given you a kind of introduction in how to start messing around and changing the styling of your NVD3 charts. In the next one, we'll actually put a stroke, so a line around these bars. And for that, we won't actually do that in JavaScript. We have to use CSS to do that. So I hope this video was okay. Any comments or questions, let me know. Otherwise, see you in the next one.